Welcome back to What Sold. This channel is all about showing you exactly that. We buy and sell things, mostly on online and platforms like eBay, things like that. I'm gonna show you what we paid for it, what we sold it for, show you the exact item, and if we have some hints and tricks for you to help you out when you're out and about looking for things, then we'll do that as well. Let's get started. Starting up today, we have this stereo view card. Now, back in the 1800s, early 1900s, this was a common uh, thing that people would have um, in their you know rooms that they hosted people in, where these stereo view like viewfinders, um, they had this like wooden handle a lot of times, and you would slide this card in, and it would kind of you know magnify it a little bit, but it put it on both eyes, and so you could zoom in, and, and it would ha it had a variety of different scenes, scenes of the Wild West, scenes from, you know, M Middle China, things and, and places and exotic things that people didn't get to really see firsthand a lot of times around the world. And it was almost like seeing a movie or it was almost like looking at travel magazines and things. You could kind of see what was going on in the world. And in this case, uh, I had a, a large lot of, um, these cards that were primarily from World War I. And so, as you can imagine, quite gruesome, a lot of them. Um, this one, not as much. This is just showing you some military scenes. And you can see it's like troops. Um, it says veterans of the 15th Regiment of 369th Infantry in New York City. So this is, I guess, American troops coming home after World War I. Um, paid. I paid about $20 for right around 50 of these cards. So it's in less than um, 50 cents really per card. And this card sold for $12 and 40 cents. Was pretty happy to get that. This, um, this next item here, the Samsonite, it's pretty cool. It's big, big leather suitcase. You can see um, a little bit of water damage, some staining in there, but it has the original plastic um, hangers. And uh, it's a really cool thing. It's pretty sturdy. Um, people don't usually use this type of luggage much anymore. Um, so I don't know if this person just collects it or if they plan on using it. But anyways, had it up for $159. Uh, I accepted an offer for $140. And so um, this came in a large antique lot. I didn't. I don't. I didn't buy this individually. Um, some people have told me recently, like a good way to figure out your cost whenever you buy a large lot is to take the total number of items and the di divide them out of the cost that you spent, and then that will break it down a, a, a price per item if you wanted to do it that way. Um, that sounds fine. The only problem with that is that sometimes I buy th things in the thousands, and so um, it may take me months. Uh, to get through everything, and so I wouldn't know till the end exactly how many items I had. Suffice it to say, when I get a large lot of things, I try to buy, uh, I try to sell rather the stuff that I think will sell the fastest and for the most money quickly, get my money back, and then then I have the ability to mark things up, but give significant discounts or accept best offers. This one here is a, a piece of jewelry. We sell a ton of jewelry. Uh, if you haven't tuned in yet to this channel, um, or if you're not familiar with our sister channel, Rusty the Reseller, um, we sell down here at the warehouse a ton of, of jewelry, costume jewelry and fine jewelry. This is a great example. It's a crown trafari necklace. It's uh, quite nice, uh, very large, kind of wide pendant at the bottom. It's got faux pearls and rhinestones. It's not missing anything, which is great. And up there um, with that kind of hook, into the, the loops there, you can vary the, the length um, of, the, of the necklace. And on the very inside of that, very small, you've got the patent pending mark and where they would put like a patent number for that particular closure or clasp. And then you have the Trafari mark, which I don't come across a lot that are inside like that. Usually they're just on the back or on the, a clasp itself on the outside. But I let this go for auction, $32. On another day, a better day, I might have made 50 off of this, but I just sort of uh, let the masses decide the value of that that day. $32.67, I paid $3 for that item. I buy costume jewelry individually when I'm picking it Almost never do I spend more than $3. It has to be a really nice brand that I know is going to bring a lot. Like, for example, uh, I bought some really nice um, Signer brand 
um, earrings recently for four dollars and fifty cents. Still not a whole lot of money, but uh, I'll sell them between one hundred and fifty and two hundred dollars because that's what they're selling for on eBay. Next up, um, this was just a large lot of marbles, and so what I did was I took them and I I just sorted them. It took me about an hour and a half to sort them all, which is not the most fun way to spend your time sorting marbles, um, but I sorted them into colors uh, and categories. So blues, reds, whites, um, and then depending on the pattern or the swirl or exactly what was going on with it, I even sorted them further. And so I think I paid $20 for this large jar of marbles and um, I've already sold several sets. This one right here went for $12.40. I've already made my money back on that and I probably have, I don't know, six, hundred marbles left to sell in small lots. Uh, again, that's the way we make our money the best is buying large lots. If we go into say a yard sale and there's lots of items, we'll say how much for everything. Usually it takes people back because they're not expecting a person to, to say that. And then they either have an offer or they ask you to make an offer. Um, and we'll get sometimes large lots of things for just pennies on the dollar when you break it down to the per item cost. Right here, we have Thomas and Friends. Uh, this is, you know, you've seen these most likely if you see toys at thrift stores and things. It's just these Thomas the Train little train cars. Some of them are die cast, they're metal, and uh, they've got this like paint on the metal. Some of them are wooden, like these. Um, a lot of times they're magnetic or they'll have little hook things where they pull other cars behind them. And oftentimes they'll have the name somewhere on the car. Uh, like for example, here it's on the bottom. This is Henry and Henry's Tinder. So this was nice, a nice lot because we had both the engines and we also had their kind of corresponding um, cars that they pull. Um, I had around 200 of these Thomas the Train cars, uh, cars, train cars, various derivatives of, of things. Sometimes they're electronic, so you always want to check to see if the batteries are working or not and, and specify that in your listing. But um, I've sold this lot for $28. I think I had about $50 in on all 200, and so 28 is great. Um, that's more than half my money back in this one lot. I've already sold two or three, so I've got a bunch of other small lots of these as well that I'm just waiting to sell. And because I'm not waiting for my money back, uh, I'm not going to stress about how long it takes. Oh man, I hated to sell this because I just thought it was an interesting piece of history here. Um, this was uh, an etching, like a watercolor, basically. Uh, it's, it's, it's really an engraving that has been hand tinted um, by someone after the fact with really beautiful kind of vibrant colors, even still, even though this is from 1910. Um, I'll click on it here so you can see. This is basically, um, there was this time period after James Fenimore Cooper wrote The Last of the Mohicans where there was this resurgence in um, interest in the Native American culture. And um, obviously that group had been disenfranchised and enslaved and murdered and all kinds of horrible things. Their land taken from them, everything taken from them. Um, and then yet at a certain point in time comes along and people get super interested in this people group again, uh, even though they had historically been treating them terribly. Um, and so what they what you'll see is a lot of advertisements during the time, a lot of um, posters, um, you'll see artwork, you'll see um, pieces of, of art that were created specifically for uh, illustrations in books, children's books, the list goes on of Native American imagery, but instead of it being an actual Native American, it's typically a Caucasian or a white person um, wearing stereotypical Native American wardrobes. And so in this case, you have a woman with very, you know, white features, um, wearing this kind of robe and a feather in her hair, in her, you know, in this kind of bandana situation. And this hand, hand tinted, it was quite a, a beautiful piece of art, but then you had this really awesome Art Nouveau sort of style. And this is definitely period. I imagine this is the original frame, uh, because, uh, 1910 was in that era of of the Art Nouveau kind of movement. So um, really cool. I got this in a lot of antiques, so I don't have the price exactly that I paid for it. This was among several pieces, but it sold for $200. And uh, that was 
you know, it took me a little while to package it because it's glass over that as well. And you wanna make sure um, at places like Home Depot, Lowe's, sometimes you can buy these. I think they're specifically made for like TVs, but they're awesome for artwork. If you sell artwork, they're a little expensive uh, on the low end. You're, I think the box for that one costs $20, but it comes with these little foam corner pieces you can put on and also some um, bubble wrap you can wrap it in. The larger ones will cost you closer to $40, but you can fit pretty large pieces of artwork in there, 25 sorry not 25 maybe 22 inch by 30 and 40 some inch long pieces of artwork uh, in those um, and also TVs <laughs> that they're made for this is a small lot of adjustable sockets that's the snap-on brand and if you're not familiar with the snap-on brand um, is very popular they're they're very popular with mechanics auto mechanics and uh, different um, you know places that do repairs on vehicles and such um, snap-on. They've been around for a long time. They're highly collectible. And so if you ever come across these at say yard sales or whatever, and they're, you know, 50 cents, a buck, uh, almost doesn't matter what it is, it's gonna sell. And this lot of just four old sort of rusted sockets at $53 and 50 cents. Uh, I paid hundred dollars for a tool chest. In that tool chest were several snap-on tools among other things. So half my money is back in this lot of just a few. And I have a, a tool chest that probably weighs about 50 pounds full of, of tools yet to sell. This was very unique. In fact, I didn't see another one like it when I did my research. Similar items, nothing just like this. This is from 1882. It is an, an encampment um, metal flag thing. This is like, a, I think, uh, like um, commemorative gatherings of people who were in, um, I believe, the Civil War. Um, and so this is an 1882 thing. This was from Baltimore. And let me click on it here so you can see it. Really awesome, like old, like this commemorative coin that's a part of this. It's basically like a, a pin or like a medal, essentially, but it's set up kind of like a pin or a brooch. Um, and you can see this really awesome brass. Um, you've got the, the um, you know, the, the eagle there and clutching some stuff and this old American flag looking thing. Really, really awesome. Um, $66, five bits. So I was pretty happy with that. Okay, now we have the vintage Ronson um, chrome cigarette lighter. This is something that would be called, considered new old stock, meaning it is new because it is packaged and it's never been taken out and used before, but it's old stock because it was actually made possibly decades ago or years ago. And so if you're interested in old vintage items that have never actually been used and are still in their original packaging, you should look up the, uh, the letters NOS or the phrase new old stock in a search and you'll find that kind of stuff. And so this is a good example. It is an old lighter um, by the Ronson brand. It's in its original pot packaging. It's just like chrome lighter situation. And uh, it has a really cool like, um, I guess it's essentially like a cross with like light coming out of it on there, but you can see the bottom, it's got the patent numbers and all this stuff. Still got the, you know, you can see it's never been lit before. Um, so pretty, pretty cool there. Um, had that go on an auction for $27. Um, I had only paid a dollar for this. I imagine the people selling it thought that it didn't work anymore because it was old, but um, still works perfectly fine. It just hasn't been used yet. Now this was a cool item that we got in uh, an antique store buyout. We bought an entire antique store and this was something that was actually hanging outside, um, almost like it had been in a barn. And it's an old um, ox yoke harness. So like put it on an oxen and uh, it's like a harness to, uh, to, to uh, connect stuff to it that it will pull. Um, it's made of solid wood. It was heavy. And it was also difficult to find a box that would fit it. Um, you can see that it has a split at the top of it, but this is like an, an authentic piece, uh, like a, a, a tool essentially, a, a piece of equipment that was uh, used by most likely a farmer. Um, and so $250 and that, that sold within two weeks. And I didn't even, you know, they didn't even make an offer. They just, uh, they accepted the price I had up there. So 250 bucks. That's pretty awesome. I've seen these as cheap as $50 when I've seen them out before. Uh, but prior to this, I never bought one because I didn't know if they could move. Now, if I see one, I may be more likely to try to jump in. 
this is a nice little sword that we got in that same buyout. Um, this is kind of like, it, 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 I said Spanish question mark, but uh, upon further research, we've actually come across a couple more swords since then. And it is indeed um, made in Spain. It's, it's a replica. This particular scroll work design here on the, on the bottom of the blade with this kind of brass color and on the sheath is sort of a, a, a dead giveaway of where it's manufactured. Um, we've got another one right now that we're, we haven't even listed yet, but we just got in and um, you can see this one was a little bit bent, but not a big deal. Um, except $100 is what this went for. I didn't buy it individually, it came, but you should know that swords, even replica swords, I mean, I almost never sell a sword for less than a hundred bucks. It's like a hundred bucks or more. Some of the like worst condition replica swords, people just like them, I guess they hang them up. Um, and so, uh, especially if it's in good condition, especially if it has um, a sheath of some kind, um, or it's maybe particularly rare or old, it could sell really, really well. This is a really in, like a neat ring that I hadn't ever seen one before, and that's kind of why I picked it up. Paid a hundred bucks for it, sold it for a hundred and eighty dollars uh, on auction. But it's what they call a camphor camphor glass. Uh, it's a diamond ring, a diamond in the middle. I believe it was fourteen karat gold, and this is kind of like a um, it's like frosted almost. It's been clearly like buffed. Uh, to, to be like this frosted type of a glass. It's not, it's semi-translucent, but there's really nice design around it. You can see that right there. Um, lots of prongs um, holding that up. I guess that was a size like seven or eight. And um, yeah, it was 14 karat yellow gold. It's definitely kind of more of like an art, art. It's kind of a transitional period. That's not exactly Art Nouveau and it's not exactly Art Deco. It's uh, maybe even more of like a Victorian look. Um, but you may or may not know certain buzzwords are can be hot at certain times. Our Art Deco right now is really hot. If you, uh, yeah, it needs to actually be Art Deco <laughs> um, design if you want to put that in there. Uh, but if you, uh, but you should familiarize yourself with these types of styles of either furniture or artwork or design because when it's popular in a certain time period, you should know what they look like so that you'll um, know what to look for when you're out sourcing. This came from um, in a, a um, it was like a thrift store that I bought a bunch of items from, a bunch of jewelry among other things, and I decided instead of parting all of this out, I would do it indiv uh, or individually. I decided to do this all as one lot. So we're, what you're looking at is a very large lot of sterling silver pieces, and all you people out there who like sterling silver are gonna kind of ooh and ah over this. It was a very cool lot. Um, had very few pieces that were individuals as far as like missing an earring or whatever else that I had to figure out something else with this. I, I was able to, they were all intact. It was 95 plus percent wearable, meaning there's no damage. You can immediately get it and wear it. Um, a decent amount of it was tarnished. I didn't polish any of it because I wanted them to do that if they wanted. And if they didn't, if they wanted to collect it as is, then I would let them do that. But, um, lots of things here. We had sterling silver, um, uh, like cuff bracelets, we had like napkin rings, thimbles, bracelets, earrings, uh, rings, necklaces, brooches, you name it. Uh, it was a really cool lot. 25 bids, $690. And I don't remember if I put the actual weight on here or not. I didn't. Um, if you're going to be selling sterling silver, you're usually getting about 75% of the gram weight, like dollar to gram weight. So meaning if it's, if it's 10 grams, you're probably you're gonna sell it around seven dollars and fifty cents for just scrap silver. If it's a thousand grams, uh, seven hundred and fifty dollars around. And I would say that this was probably around a thousand grams, sold for six hundred and ninety dollars. All right, here we have some pocket knives. Knives, uh, they sell really really well. Um, if you've got collectible ones like Case Brand or some of these other collectible well-known knives, then they do even better. This is Buck. It's not as, I wouldn't say it's as collectible of a brand, but these were new in box. Again, new old stock. They had a little bit of like, I don't know, almost looks like wear on them, but that's really just dust. Um, they That could have been kind of polished out. Again, I didn't touch them. I didn't mess with them. Collectors sometimes don't want you to do that. Uh, but these were very nice knives. Uh, they have numbers on them a lot of times right there 
right at the bottom of where the blade is, right around where it attaches to the um, to the handle of the knife is where you'll see brand names or number model numbers and things like that. So look for those. Only got one bid on this, but $80. And I think I paid $20 for this pair. So I was, I was pretty happy with that. This was a $1 purchase. It's uh, what they call a swung vase. I didn't know this until recently, but vases that come up and they have this type of a look where, and sometimes they're more pronou uh, pronounced on one side, at the, like they're, they extend farther on one side and then down lower on another. Um, but they're called swung vase. I don't know why they're called that, but that was just a particular style. Orange, this kind of orange swirl was a, a rare color. I didn't see that a whole lot. And uh, the, clearly it was popular. Seven bids, $92. So $92 off of a single dollar purchase. That's something to look for. I've got another one over here. Um, I, I was just actually photographing a minute ago. It's smaller. It's probably just about this big. In fact, let me just grab it. Hold on a second. Bear with me. Bear with me. Here it is. Right here. Blue. See, it's a swung. It's a swung vase. This is like translucent, and uh, so that's what they look like. I only paid two dollars for this one. I don't think I'll get ninety-two dollars off it, but I might get forty, forty or fifty, and that's still a really good, um, that's a really good sale. So be looking for those. This was gorgeous. Never come across one for probably never will again. These were 14 karat solid yellow gold cufflinks with large synthetic alexandrite. And if you aren't aware, I mean, just look at those. Holy cow, just incredible. The problem is that people don't wear cufflinks a ton anymore. That's not, I mean, I guess some, but that's just not like a, it's a little bit of a dated piece of um, jewelry or, or something that people wear. It still happens, it's, not as, it's just not as often. And when people are wearing it, I, I don't know, they're probably not wanting solid gold stuff because they could, could fall off on the floor and you lose it. But um, it was stamped, it was uh, really cool. Alexandrite is a really interesting stone. I think, um, I think it comes from Russia, maybe a couple different places in the world that it comes from, but basically, uh, depending on the light, it, uh, it will look like a different color. It can fluctuate between like purples and pinks and blues um, and even reds. Um, really interesting gemstone and non-synthetic ones um, are, are quite rare and quite valuable, quite expensive per carat. So, but this, you know, I was sad. I was hoping this would go for more. $218.50. This came in with a, a, a thrift store buyout that I did of a bunch of their jewelry and things that they hadn't put on the floor yet. So um, I paid $4,000 for for an entire room, almost floor to ceiling of boxes of things. And uh, in two weeks time, I'd done $5,500 in sales. So I was already in to the profit $1,500 by the time I sold these. And so I wasn't concerned about what my cost was. I already had that back. This was a pretty unique looking ring. These are all emeralds. I think there were 13 in total, something like that, 11 or 13. Rose gold, um, pretty, I would say decent quality, not like great quality emeralds. Uh, I suspect that these were, um, I don't know, if I were a betting man, I'd say maybe Colombian, uh, based on the color, because they were quite, um, quite light in color and um, sort of that particular color there. But um, it was a small size, if I recall. Yeah, five and a half, which that's pretty small. Um, I would say that the majority of women, adult women. Are, uh, have a larger size than that. but So sometimes it's hard. Just because a ring is really awesome, another thing you need to keep in mind is the size. If it's like a 10 or 11, or it's a four and a half, um, it's gonna be hard to sell that unless they're just wanting it uh, as a collector or in order to uh, just scrap for the metal weight or harvest the stones. If you want something that's gonna sell, a person's gonna wear. For women, for example, you're gonna be looking mostly in like the six to eight range. Um, and for men, it's it's larger than that. A lot of times, it's more like in the eight to ten, seven to seven to ten, something like that. I was hoping to get better for this. I think that if I had waited longer and done this as a buy it now, I could have sold this for double that amount, maybe even triple that amount. Um, that happens sometimes. I wanted to move it. I, I you know I had all this gold jewelry, and I just wanted to get that money back in house. So someone's really happy with it. Uh, I hope they enjoy it. They got, they really got a good steal on that, frankly. Um, scrapbooks are really cool. I don't know if you've ever seen these. 
but they typically feature a lot of what you call die cuts. And they're oftentimes very, very well done, uh, very intricate, very colorful. Um, but this is during kind of the Victorian era. We're talking early to late 1800s. And um, this particular one was special because it, it was not a lot of die cuts. It was almost all stuff from like newspapers and magazine cuttings, but it had a, a theme and that was like um, actors and actresses and famous people and um, politicians and uh, leaders of countries and uh, things like that. And so as you can see, as I'm flipping through this, it was, uh, it was a fascinating uh, look back in time. It really, really was at the, at just the, the style, the hairstyles, the wardrobe, um, what, what people were named, what they were doing, what was important to be in print, in media for, for the masses to consume. Um, I paid $18 for this at a, an antique store. It was a very large one. And I accepted, I think, a best offer for $90. So I had it up for $110, took $90. It's pretty big. It was almost like 18 inches tall and about 12 inches wide. So uh, pretty, pretty large book. Um, okay, last couple ones here today, Cutco knives. So there aren't a ton of brands of like cutlery knives that outside of like really, really high end stuff that you're going to find at thrift stores, but Cutco is one of them. Um, they're the kind of company where a lot of people would, I'm not going to say it was like a pyramid scheme, um, but it was definitely kind of like makeup brands and things where the way that they sold these a lot of times was they, they found people who were interested. They would bring them to a house, they'd show them, they'd teach them. And their job was to like call people up and just go into people's homes and do demonstrations on them. And then, and then sell them either individual knives or, or, or sets. And so, um, they are really good quality knives. They are very sharp. Um, I think that they have a lifetime warranty. So if they get dull, like you can send them back, they'll sharpen them or they might even replace them. Um, but they're very distinct based on the handle. And so they have, I'm going to show you this. They have this kind of almost like an hourglass, um, kind of, of shape. And it's actually very ergonomically, um, well done. In my opinion, when I mean, you hold it in your hand, uh, you can grip it really well. Uh, and that's one of the ways I can tell, like a lot of times knives are displayed with the blades down, but I can tell just by looking at the handle, if it's a cut cone knife, I paid $2 for this knife. It was in really good condition. And I sold it in one week for $50. I've sold others for more than that, even smaller knives. Um, if they're rare, if they're like new and really good condition. I bought a, a, a set of eight one time. I think I paid $20 for the set and I sold it for over 200. So cut co knives, keep that in your arsenal. And then lastly, this came in our antique store buyout. When I saw this, I had no idea what it was. Um, uh, uh, one of my coworkers here, um, Peaches, he did some research and he found, um, he found out what this was. It's called a vasculum. <laughs> This is an antique item. You can see this, this uh, strap here and it's rusted on the inside, but it's got these compartments. This is what they call like, it was like a specimen collector. So people would go out who want, who were interested in nature and in the environment and wanted to collect things like flowers or mushrooms or plants or snails or I don't know, rocks, things that are interesting in nature, they would put them in this and then they would carry it back. And so this was specifically made for that. Some of the uh, the most valuable ones or most intricate ones are made in Germany. A lot of times they'll have floral designs or different patterns and things like hand painted on the metal on the outside of them. Um, but that's what it is. It's for collecting specimens. Uh, this sold in two weeks for $120. I probably wouldn't have known what this was uh, Otherwise, if I'd walked in, say, an antique store and seen it, I wouldn't have known. I wouldn't have thought that it would bring values based on the kind of rough, rusted condition. But there you have it, $120. So keep a lookout for that. This is just stuff that sold in the last couple of months. Not our worst sales, not our best sales, just a general um, idea of the types of things that we're selling. 
hope that helped uh, one or two of you out there. Um, if you have any questions or thoughts, um, please uh, leave those comments. We appreciate it. And if you haven't checked out uh, the other channel uh, that, that's getting a lot of uh, traction within the Slick Web Media family, it's called Rusty the Reseller. We've got others, though, called Postcard Planet and High Spirits and Sound Machine. Um, so be on the lookout for those. We really appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. We're going to put one to two videos out per week. Um, we're selling between 30 and 60 items in this one eBay store that I showed you today per week. So we always have new things to show. Um, we appreciate you stopping by and hope that you find a treasure soon if you're out. Take care. Thank you.